히트 다 히트 히트 시즌 2 Welcome back to the SSL Season 2 of 2016. We had one very, very short series there. Dark 2-0 Trust before we could even get the words out of our mouth. Yeah, um, you can just pretty much describe it in one word. Wrecked. Yeah, pretty much. Wrecked, Shrekt. It was a shrek a -bop. It was. It was like, it was totally, like... Don't watch the VODs, just take our word for it. It was like two all-ins uh, no. from Dark. Watch the VODs <laughs> if you're a Zerg player and you want to know how to all-in yeah. properly. I, yeah, I, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But if you're not a Zerg, if you're a casual fan and you don't really care about build orders and stuff, don't watch the games. Just take our word, they were very one-sided. Yeah, but, but our next game, actually, yeah. Alive versus this, this will be definitely more closer than that previous set. It's going to be quite close, I believe, because, you know, Alive did have those games to watch of Gumio over Zest. He's like, hmm, okay, here's some ways to defeat Zest in this matchup, where before people were just stumped. No Terrence could really do it, but Alive, he's a really cerebral player. He loves to think about different builds for maps. You always think about this very strategical type of player, and he's going to come in here with a plan. He wants to get into that winner's match and go up against Dark. Yeah, with Alive, his story throughout Legacy of Void has been quite an odyssey. He did very well at the start. He was wrecking everyone in the SSL and Pro League. And then when round two came around, he just completely disappeared and went off the map. But he's come back for round three. The Freak of Freaks are in playoffs for the first time, I believe. And also, uh, Alive is alive and kicking. Yeah, he really is. And another guy who's definitely alive is Zest here. The best player in the world. The best Protoss as well. You can see how he got here. He did take... One loss to Losira and two against Super, but he did 2-0 Hero, Reality, and Maru. So that should say a lot about Zest. He really just has trouble with certain players, right? Like Rogue, Rogue. Super, uh, Creator. MC, oh, he did advance in his GSL yeah. in that final match against MC, but... He kind of like downloaded him and figured him yeah, out eventually, right? In yeah. one day, because, you know, he had a lot of games to play against him, but some other players... He just can't seem to beat. But against Alive, I would still definitely favor him here. Even though Alive has a chance, I would still favor Zest coming into this Yeah, one. it's very hard to favor Zest unless he's playing against someone like T.Y. or Dark. You know, that top four echelon of players out there here in Korea. But our first match will be on Frozen Temple, a very straightforward two-player map. Yeah, the map is all loaded up, so we're going to jump into that right now. Game number one, Zest versus Alive. We are on Frozen Temple, another one of our ice maps. We'll be seeing Frost later on. Down here in the bottom right in the red, the Terran player from the Afrika Freaks is alive. And it's morning here at the top left side of Frozen Temple. Katie Protoss in blue hits Zest, the GSL champion. Quick gas here from Alive. No surprises, probably wants to get that really quick factory and Reaper out to do the scouting. Zest also playing very standard, getting Gateway, the Assimilator. And note he's only got that one probe onto the gas, which means he wants to get this Nexus out slightly faster. Yeah, just Gate Nexus Core. It's one of these builds that's become so standard and so good. It's like, it's basically the greediest economic build that you can do against both Terran and Zerg and still feel safe about it. You know, it's, it's still a standard, you know, solid build without being too greedy, but it's about as greedy as you can get without getting to, like, Nexus first, basically. Yeah, it's like one of those builds where if you see a cheese or something like that, something unorthodox coming, uh, you can just easily cancel your Nexus and mm. start adding those gateways, get the Mothership core out quicker than you would normally if you are doing that Nexus uh, after your simulator, and ooh, that probe actually gets away. Very low on health, and uh, looks like behind this factory, Alive's getting the command center at the expansion. Yeah, just using that gas on that factory. We'll see what kind of build he wants to do here. Uh, obviously going for the fast deck. He's staying on only one gas, though. He hasn't gotten that second gas, so not going to be super quick starport or any kind of Banshee play or anything weird like that. No fast, uh, you know, 
starport units. He is just going to switch here yeah, with gonna, the tech lab and, and, and cyclone. Yeah, as this is a very alive sort of thing to do to get that really quick cyclone. Uh, I believe Bravo is also one of these players that, in this matchup, they love to get that early cyclone because he just does a very good job against War Prison Harassment, does a very good job against you know, small unit counts. Uh, and it's just a very good unit to have at the start of the game. Yeah, and you know who else does this is Gumio, who is one of the only Terrans to be very consistent against Zess and actually defeat him in the group. So. Actually, I, I, I just remembered they actually didn't play because MC beat Zest, mm -hmm. and then Gumiho beat whoever he beat. They, they oh, and then Gumiho beat MC? Yeah. I, oh, okay. I, I was actually getting confused there. It was, yeah. Uh, we, watch, we watch so many games here in Korea, so we're on the track. There's Bomber Ooh, in Bomber. a suit. He is playing in group number, group B. Number B. <laughs> group number B. So he's studying a bit. And uh, Cyclone actually takes out the Adept. Very nice win there for Alive. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if also Bomber is friendly with some of these players, probably Alive. Well, they're on the same team. Yeah. So. Makes a lot of sense that he comes down here, supports his teammate. Yeah, looking very flash though. With the uh, button up shirt. Mm. In this weather, I'd be wearing like a t shirt or something like that. It's so hot. He's trying to play the role of coach. Legend couldn't come down today. Uh oh. Staying a bit long with the Cyclone. And this is going to go down. Kind of unfortunate. That would have been very nice to have for the defense against the Oracles. Mm. But And the thing is, like, he didn't even lock onto the Oracle. So any damage that he could have done with the Cyclone is just completely gone. But there are these Widow Mines out, which, if placed correctly, can get the hits off on the Oracles. See where he wants to hide that, and if he wants to get any bit aggressive here, he does have four adepts and this oracle, but there is already a bunker at the front. So, alive taking the necessary precautions. Yep, and looks like here we've got the bunker. The oracle does zip back, and actually, adepts just sort of run by the bunker. He's gonna take out a few SCVs, actually, takes out the mule, but oh, nice win in my shot. But the oracles can just sit here and just zap these units. Yeah, all the adepts very, very low, but as you were saying, no real defense for the oracles now. They dip, duck, and dive out of the way of everything. They snipe a bunch of the uh, marines here as well and get out alive. Very nice start for Zest in this game. Yeah, the problem with alive in that situation, oh sorry, for Zest, is that he's got two oracles. So if he had only one oracle, he'd have to be concerned about the Winamon, but with these two oracles that are flying around the map, he can just use one oracle for the tags onto the Winter Mines and then use the other one to try and snipe the Winter Mines or just uh, help uh, find out what the uh, Winter Mines are of how live are. Yeah, very, very true. And these two oracles, because they do survive, they're just going to continue being very, very annoying. Uh, you see already the engineering bay being made. Alive is probably going to have to commit to some missile turrets here and stick around his base. Even just having the threat of the oracles keeps Alive back and not really harassing too much. He is going to send the double uh, Widowmine drop around here, but there's already a cannon. Yes, this is completely on top of this. Oh, he's not looking, though. Oh, no. And here we go. Five, or no, rather two SCVs. Or no, five probes go down, as well as doing a bit of damage to the Mothership Core. Oh, that cannon actually kills the Widowmine just in time before the Widowmine could detonate. Yeah. And uh, Sneaky and Depth Seal. That was, uh, that, was that was on the edge of the range there, of the cannon, so... Uh, Live just slightly misplacing that one. And he gets a few SAV kills for these Adepts. Good trade. Yeah, not bad. And with that pressure, he's going to take this third base as well. You see that Alive not going for that anytime soon. Just sitting back in his base, powering up. He wants to get a very strong army first. And what I love about Zest playing this game is that he's keeping his oracles alive. He's not throwing them away, trading them for SUVs or any units that Alive has. And later on, as we progress further and further into the game, into the mid game and the late game, those oracles just have so much utility with the tag and even with the stasis wards. Yeah, they definitely do. This may be a bit of a problem if he does not have a pylon behind this mineral line, and he does not. He only has the cannon, and he's just, he's just aware that, uh, oh, I forgot the pylon, I've got to build it. Nice transfer, though. Doesn't lose any probes from that Liberator. At the same time, look at this. He's just got a ton of units right at the front of the base, and where is the army of Alive? It's out on the map, and now all the sentries are in the main. Oh, boy. Can force field that ramp, and no way those units are going to get up there unless they drop in, and Zess has got blinks, so that's oh, going to no, be really hard to do. Back. He lost the medic back with all those units. 
and Alive is looking in a very tough spot right now. Look at the supply count, it's ridiculous. He just blinks underneath that medevac. What are you gonna do? What a move here from Zest, GG. Oh, that is something I would say, like I said before, when Beyond was playing Seed, Zest caught Alive with his pants down. He really did. Completely caught off guard when his arm was just taking a nap there uh, on that east side of Frozen Temple. And Zest saw that opportunity to come in, use the sentry with the War Prism, force field of the ramp, and won the game. Protosses are beginning to do this. Hero and Zest, namely, they're like, no, we can still do this. We, we can use the War Prism. You can just ferry into the main. Don't even need Blink, but with Blink, it's that much stronger. And Keep in mind that he also had a third base behind that, so it's not like that was an all-in no, move or anything like that. No. He was he was probing up, you know. He was he was very far ahead of alive at that point in the game. Honestly, that was more alive losing the game than Zest winning that game because alive's army was like just in the middle of nowhere. I'm not really sure why it was that sitting there at the three block position. And yeah, when it, when that army is not there to defend from the war prison harassment, you're obviously going to lose the game. Certainly doesn't help. I mean, he did.